Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to be here uh, with you all to celebrate the 17, 799th uh, anniversary of Magna Carta. But like uh, Steve, I'm afraid I'm no expert. Um, but I do take the advice of Lord Denning. Lord Denning described the Magna Carta as the greatest constitutional document of all time. And of course, he's absolutely right. But of course, the Magna Carta is a beacon. It's a beacon. And everyone from then on and now has to make sure that we retain the liberties which um, first grew in that chart. And I'm not at all sure that we're doing it. There are courts in this country um, which are not seen to give justice. The children's courts, for example, are not allowed to be reported. And anybody who does so can be jailed, and indeed have been jailed. The Court of Protection is another court where justice cannot be seen to be done. And again, anybody who reports anything from that court can be jailed. In this England of ours, this great United Kingdom of ours, free speech is no longer, no longer completely free you really do have to watch what you say. And indeed, people say things and they say, I shouldn't have said that, should I? Or am I allowed to say yes. that? That people in this country should be asking whether they should be allowed to say something is completely against um, our idea of liberty and freedom. But I'm afraid um, if, for example, you are uh, a BBC employee who puts on a record which he hasn't listened to and which in fact was produced 40 years ago and there happens to be a certain word beginning with N in the context of that record, you get the sack! Shame! You get the sack! without even a pan appeal. Now what sort of freedom of speech is that? You can be a Christian giving the Christian message and if you offend just one person, the police will be at your church telling you to take down the notice or telling you that you can't do that in the street. And indeed the police have the power to uh, say where people assembly. So that we have to be very careful about our liberty. And indeed, in many respects, we have to bring back our liberty. We uh, need to demand our liberty back. And fortunately, we have the opportunity now, I don't know for how much longer, but we now have the ability to dismiss our government and put in an alternative government who will restore uh, our liberties to us and ensure that we remain a truly free country. But of course, all that is changing. We're no longer um, governed by Parliament and our own elected government. The real government of this country is in Brussels. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not in Westminster or Whitehall. It's in Brussels. And I looked at the latest um, figures issued by the House of Commons Library about the issues, the percentage of our laws um, which come from Europe. And it's over 60%. You can't be self-governing 
if a polyglot uh, crowd of people sitting in a foreign capital can decide 60% of your policies. Yeah. And we have in Brussels um, an unelected, uh, what is it? You, bureaucracy, bureaucracy, I suppose it is. It's worse than that, really. Tyranny. Uh, it's mm. a tyranny. That's quite right. A very, very good word. It is a tyranny. And indeed, um, as you've seen from the newspapers just lately, they can make a demand on you, our taxpayers, for an extra £600 million, just like that. Parliament will not have to agree to it. It will have to be paid. Because bit by bit, government by government, whether they call themselves Labour or Tory or Liberal or what have you, the decisions and the power of our own Parliament of Government has been removed yes. to foreign governments sitting in a foreign capital. And they're thinking now of adopting um, a new bureaucrat to head the European Commission. Um, very important man. He was the Prime Minister of Luxembourg. <laughs> um, Luxembourg has the same population as Manchester, <laughs> but he was the Prime Minister of Luxembourg and that apparently gives him the authority to be the real government of Europe. And what does this man want? He wants the European Union to be the governor, government of every country. He doesn't believe in the nation states and he wants ever closer union which our Prime Minister says he doesn't want. Now what's he going to do about it? We don't know yet. But we have people in this country who don't believe in this country. You have this uh, big business group led by that dear old Democrat, Lord Mandelson, who say that this country can't exist alone. We have to be part of this single market. Um, in fact, the real market is out there in the real world, not stuck in the back of the water of Europe. But the fact of the matter is that these are the very same people who said that we would be sidelined and would go on the rocks if we didn't join the single currency. You all remember that? Yes. Well, now, what would have happened to this country if we'd taken their advice then? It wouldn't be a country which uh, is estimated to have a growth of 3.4% uh, this year and next year. Um, and we would have unemployment probably reaching about 4 million instead of uh, being 2 million. Uh, and and uh, we would uh, not be able to make our own uh, policy in any respect at all. And of course, when did you last hear our Foreign Secretary making a decent statement on world affairs? No. He hasn't been doing it. He's been aping the European Union and uh, pushing forward their policy. But of course, I believe, and you all believe, that the United Kingdom is, has been, and remains a great country which has a lot to offer the world. Yeah, yeah. And it's a great pity that our politicians don't do exactly that. And um, I'm going to finish shortly. Um, who do other people think Britain is? We've just had the um, celebration, if you like, of the start of the Great War. World War One, And there were thousands of people there. Thousands of people. And the leaders were there of the great countries. What about the people, the ordinary people? Who did they want to see and hear? Um, was it Monsieur Hollande, that great um, socialist? Um, was it... Um, uh, Mr. Putin, 
I don't think so. Was it, um, uh, uh, what's her name now? Frau, Frau, Frau Merkel? <laughs> <laughs> they certainly didn't want to listen to her. But what about President Obama? Was he the firm firm favourite? No. Of course he wasn't. It was Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom. That's who people wanted to see. That's the person they wanted to hear. Those, she was the person that they respected. And uh, that showed to me, if I needed any persuasion, which of course I didn't, that this country was still a great place, respected not only by the decent people of this country, but by people abroad who admire our institutions. They don't run them down, they admire our institutions and want to emulate them. And we should always remember that. And this association has a big job to do, and that is to make sure that our governors, as far as they now govern in this country, don't rob us of more of our freedoms, and to ensure that we leave the institution which will gradually enslave the people of this country as they have done in many cases before. Bravo.